Okay, in this video, we're going to look at inequalities involving the modulus function. Before we do that, I'm going to look at um, inequalities involving uh, squares and so on and see how this relates to what we've got here. So I'm just going to go across here quickly and have a look. So in this example, we're going to look at is x squared is less than 9. So one of the solutions to that is take the square root of both sides. You'll have x is less than 3, and that is absolutely fine. But if you just uh, took the negative square root and got 3 and left the inequality that way, let's look at the solutions to this thing and see if a solution to this is also a solution to this. So, for example, uh, a number which is less than minus 3 would be minus 4. But if you take minus 4 and square it, you will get plus 16. And plus 16 is not less than 9. So basically, this does not work. So, how we can do this? Uh, let's just go back to the start here and do this again and see how we can work out our solutions. So if we start with x, uh, if we start with x squared is less than 9, what you want to do is take the positive square root. So that's uh, xn and 3. And for your positive root square root, your inequality stays the same direction. For the negative square root, so the negative square root of 9 would be minus 3, your inequality changes direction. And let's see if that one works. So pick a number which is greater than minus 3. So greater than minus 3 would be minus 2. And if you square minus 2, you will get 4. And sure enough, 4 is less than 9. Also in this one, the solution can be pushed together. Minus 3 is less than x is less than 3. So basically, any number which satisfies this log inequality will also satisfy this. Okay, going back to what we've got on this page then, it says consider modulus x is less than or equal to 6. We're going to see how we've actually arrived at this result. So, uh, first of all, just like we had done for the x squared type example, I'm going to say x is less than or equal to, and then there's my positive version, then x and my negative version would be minus 6, and that is going to be greater than or equal to. And those could be pushed together as one single thing, as minus 6 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 6. Same idea over here. For this second one here, modulus of x is greater than or equal to 6. The positive version, 6, and x is greater than or equal to. The negative version, minus 6, and x is less than or equal to. And then... Uh, those ones, unfortunately, can't be put together. How you can see they can be put together or cannot. This one, for example, I looked at this one on a number line. That would be minus 6 to 6. And you can see it would be drawn as one single thing, the which are connected. So that's why you can see it can be written as one single thing. Uh, okay, so I'll just get rid of that. Uh, this one, however, but if you did a number line for it, uh, did a number line out, you'd have minus 6, and its x is less than, so it's out this way, and then you have plus, your plus 6, and it's out this way, so it's not two single things, so you just have to write them as x is greater than or equal to 6, comma, x is less than or equal to minus 6. That's as good as you can go in this one. Okay, this example says, solve modulus of x minus 2 is less than or equal to 7. So we'll do the positive one. So x minus 2 is less than or equal to 7. Uh, and we'll also have a negative one. So that's x minus 2 is greater than or equal to minus 7. And then we just go through and solve those. This one means x is less than or equal to 7 plus 2. So x is less than or equal to 9. Or this one, x is greater than or equal to minus 7 plus 2. So x is greater than or equal to minus 5. And that's our two solutions. Can we push those together? We can. So minus 5 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 9, would be the nicest way to write it. This next example, same idea. You do your 3x plus 1 is greater than 8, or 3x plus 1 is less than 8. And then solve that as 3x is greater than 8 minus 1. 3x is greater than 7. x, sorry, is greater than 7 over 3. Whatever that is, x is greater than 2 and 1 third. Or over here, 3x is less than 8 minus 1. Uh, 3x, oops, sorry, that should be a minus 8. 3x is uh, less than minus 9. 
So x is less than minus 9 over 3, x is less than minus 3. So apologies there on that one, just to highlight that, uh, the mistake I made. When I did those at the start, I should have had um, 3x plus 1 is greater than 8. That was a positive one. Or 3x plus 1 is less than minus 8, but I've corrected it on down there. So there you can see. Okay, our last of this type, and I really think in this one, the best thing to do is square both sides. And uh, we will have a look at this one. So if we just square both sides, you'll have 2x plus 1 squared is greater than x plus 5 squared. So it just makes it a wee bit more straightforward. So it's going to be 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 is greater than x squared plus 10x plus 25, which means 3x squared minus 6x minus 24 is greater than 0. Tricky enough, so divide through by 3. You can divide through by 3 to make life a wee bit easier, which is going to be x squared minus 2x minus, uh, minus 8 is greater than 0. That factorizes to be x minus 4 upon x uh, plus 2, sorry, uh, is greater than 0. So it crosses at x equals 4 and x equals minus 2. That doesn't mean they are solutions. That just tells me how I'm going to draw my quadratic graph. It's a U-shaped graph. It's a U-shaped graph because this bit here that, I, that I'm going to highlight uh, is a positive quadratic. Okay, it's a positive quadratic. Uh, so that crossed at minus 2 and 4 as we worked out. And again, we want it to be above. So we want out this way or write this way, so your answers, x less than minus 2, or x is greater than 4. Okay, it says in the notes here, more complex inequalities, it is possible to solve more complex inequalities by either sketching and looking for points of intersection, or by using calculations. Really, I think the best way to do is a calculation, unless they've got the sketch uh, drawn for you. Um, uh, I wouldn't really be doing that, but it's, it's straightforward enough when you see it with the sketches or drawing for you. But calculation is the best way. So if you start with this position, definitely you want to go the calculation way. So let's just get rid of that. Put a wee line through those. We're not going to need these. We're just going to do the calculation method. Okay, and we're going to do this by just the same as we did in the last example. We're just going to square both sides. We're going to start with 2x minus 3 squared is greater than x plus 3 squared, and that's going to give you 4x squared minus, not minus 6x at all, minus uh, 12x plus 9 is greater than x squared plus 6x plus 9. Bring it all to one side, put it equal to 0, you're going to have um, 3x squared minus 18x, not equal to 0, greater than 0, I should say. Factorize out of 3x, we'll leave you x minus 6 is greater than 0. And then that means if you had that as a regular function, quadratic, it would cross at x equals 0 or x equals 6. Now, when you do your sketch of your quadratic, there you have it. It crosses at 0 and 6. And let's look back at the inequality that we're interested in, which was this one. So it's a positive quadratic. That's first of all how I knew it was a U-shaped graph. And we want it to be greater than 0, which means above. So out this way, or out this way. So x is less than 0, or x is greater than 6. And that is the end of this video. So hopefully now we're a wee bit more confident on how we solve uh, inequalities uh, with modulus functions in them.